Welcome to another example of how to use the inverse matrix method to solve linear equations. And again, normally we don't use that for two by two as we call them, you know, two variables, two equations. But it's a good way to get a feel of how to do this. Again, to find the x and y value of the solution to these two equations. In other words, the x and y coordinates of the point where the two lines cross can be found by taking the inverse matrix of A and multiplying by the matrix of B. But to figure out what those things are, we can define the matrix A as simply the coefficients of the x and the y variables here. So this is 5 and 1, 3 and negative 4. So that is defined as the matrix A. And then the matrix B can be defined as the numbers on the right side of the equation. So this is 8 and 14. Now, of course, to find x and y, we have to find the inverse of a and multiply times the matrix b. Matrix b is already here. How do we find the inverse of a? Well, we do that by the following definition. It's equal to 1 over the determinant of a times the inverse, um, not the inverse per se, but times the matrix of a with those two elements reversed. So putting the negative 4 over here and the 5 down here, and by changing the sign of the 1 and the 3, so this becomes a minus 1 and a minus 3. And also, the determinant can be found by taking the elements inside the matrix, which is uh, 5, the 1, the 3, and the negative 4, and solving the determinant of that. And the, the way you can tell that it's a determinant, not a matrix, we use simply the straight lines instead of the little brackets around it. That's how you can tell the difference. And to find the determinant, you multiply those two elements together, which is a 5 times a negative 4, and adding to that the, oh, not adding, subtracting, that would be a big mistake. We want to subtract from that the product of those two elements, which is 3 and 1. And so it's equal to minus 20 minus 3, which is minus 23. So that means the inverse of A can be found by taking 1 over the determinant, which is a minus 23, times, remember, it's these two elements replaced, so it becomes a minus 4 and a 5 down here, and the sign change of those two elements, which then becomes a minus 1 and a minus 3. There is the inverse of A. So then to find x and y, it is equal to the inverse of A, which is this, 1 over negative 23 times negative 4, negative 1, negative 3, and 5, and multiplying that times the B matrix, which is defined over here as 8 and 14. Remember how to do that. You use your fingers. You go minus 1 over 23 times the first element becomes the product of those two, negative 4 times 8, and adding to that the product of those two elements. You move your left hand to the right. You move the right hand down. So it would be negative 1 times 14. And the second element here is the product of those two, which is negative 3 and 8. And adding to that the product of those two. Remember, the left hand goes to the right, the right hand goes down, so it's 5 times 14. Okay, now we simplify. So this is equal to minus 1 over 23 times Minus 4 times 8 is minus 32. Minus 1 times 14 is minus 14. That's a minus 46. And here, minus 3 times 8 is a minus 24. 5 times 14 is a plus 70. Plus 70 minus 24 is a plus 46. And then multiply times a minus 1 over 23. This is equal to a positive 2 and a minus 2. So here you can see that the solution to these two equations can be found, the x and the y value, by going through this methodology, and we can then say that the solution is 2 and negative 2. You say, well, why do I do, go through all this trouble? Again, there's easier ways to do this kind of problem by not using the inverse matrix method, but there's other reasons why this can be a very handy method to use. And just to make sure we do this correctly, let's plug the values into our two equations. So we have 5x plus y equals 8. Plug it in a 2 and a negative 2, so 5 times 2 plus a negative 2 is that indeed equal to 8. 10 minus 2, yes indeed, that is 8. 
Second equation, 3x minus 4y equals 14. Plug it in the 2 for the x, that's 3 times 2 minus a 4 times a negative 2. Is that equal to 14? We have 6 plus 8. Yes, indeed, that's 14. So at least we know we did it correctly. It's a very easy to make a mistake in these types of problems, so you have to be very careful and go very systematically. All right, I hope this helps you. Um, if you are requested or required by your teacher to do these kind of problems, at least you have some good examples to look at. All right, all the best to you.